So I'm not sure who is watching this because uh, Simonetta said that she wanted to come, but she couldn't. And she said she may join us later. So I figured that it is nice for us to do this. Maybe she will not join, but uh, it's an opportunity. She seemed very concerned because she really cares about Poisson structures and cluster algebras. That's it. And she does differential equations. Apparently, this is connected. But, uh, okay. So what uh, were we doing last time? Since uh, Fabrizio knows everything about what we did last time, we, didn't, we don't need to review. <laughs> So we are in this setting where we're considering a, a simple complex group which is also simply connected and then we consider the, the, uh, the algebra of G We have uh, introduced the last time uh, the, all the concepts about the root system. So it's the root system. We make a choice uh, of a positive system, which uh, allows us to speak uh, about uh, the decomposition. Have we spoken about the decomposition? We have not. Uh, I have to wait. <clears throat> so in the root system, we know that uh, to every root, uh, this root can be paired with this uh, negative root, and this will give us an SL2. So for each root and its negative, we get an SL2C, which sits inside the algebra G, and uh, this will go to H alpha, X alpha, X minus alpha. So what I'm saying is that, so G, is decomposed as uh, the Cartan plus uh, the root spaces. So the root space decomposes the positive uh, disjoint union negative roots. So uh, for each uh, positive root there is a one negative pair with it. And there is an element in H that can be suitably, suitably chosen to make uh, an algebra isomorphic to SL2 sitting inside the G. So the G contains uh, all of these copies uh, of uh, SL2 inside it. We discussed this last time. We also discussed the exponential map, saying that the exponential map goes we are over the complex field, so it gives a, no, not, not a problem. We are integrating this map. So we have, this is the level of tangent space. So this is tangent at the identity to the group G. And this is obviously tangent at the identity to the group C. So we say we can integrate this uh, immersion because uh, SL2 is simply connected. Every time you have a simply connected group, because if you have a map, so this was the last thing we said last time. So if you have a map, if you have a map, a morphism of Lie groups, you can do the derivative of this map. That is the differential. You can do this, is no problem. It's the other way around, which could be a problem. But here this SL2C, which is simply connected, and also the group G is simply connected. So it makes no problem. You can obtain this map. So uh, I don't remember if we discussed this, but it's really um, very, I don't want to say immediate, but it's uh, not hard. What is the exponential of all of this? Uh, th did we discuss this last time? The expo no. OK. So let us uh, quickly review. So if I'm taking, because this we're going to use later also. So let us assume we're taking the exponential of uh, something like this, right? Mm -hmm. So this is really, um, 
is matrix. So the exponential, as we said last time, every time we are in a matrix group is really the exponential of the matrix. So it is. Uh, so you take the identity, and then uh, it is uh, h squared minus h squared, and you keep going right with the exponential expansion. And so what you get is this. Uh, you start with h. Huh? You start with h, not h squared. H. I start with h. I don't see. I don't care. That is the truth. <laughs> so is here h, h minus h? No, really, I don't care. Yes. But uh, I think I, I was supposed to ask you questions. <laughs> no, thank you. Yes. Yeah. So a so, uh, since we are in a complex field, uh, this really. If I'm looking at all the exponential of all the of all the elements in H, H meaning H is the is the Cartan inside the SL2. So this is really the set of all the matrices of this form, E P minus one. Okay, it has this uh, form because okay, we're over the complex. Now, what happens if we're looking at the same thing for the x? Okay, so x, recall that uh, is an element of this form, uh, 0. So these are the generators of the SL2. So if we're looking at the span of the space, the, the, the span of, uh, of these vectors, so what if we do the exponential of, uh, say, uh, 0, u? So this is really 1 plus, uh, as correctly Fabrizio reminded me, must be the degree 1 and not the degree 2. So this uh, will become uh, So this, and then you stop, because if you do the square, it's zero. Same for the other one. <coughs> so, um, if you look at this, uh, this is really the integral curve of this vector field, okay? If you take this vector field, this is an element on the tangent space, if you do, let's do this little calculation. Because, no, I'm doing this calculation because uh, when we do the Poisson structure, it's a calculation that is coming over and over, okay? So, I'm sorry because it's really something that uh, for you is very boring because uh, uh, we know this uh, quite well. So, uh, so if uh, x uh, is an element in the V algebra, mm -hmm. x per dx is the integral curve through the identity. So, so this is uh, g, right? And uh, if this is the identity, so this is uh, the exponential dx. Okay. This is something that we said the last time, okay? Because when you do <coughs> you really get x, okay? So this is the argument. Okay, so this is called the one parameter subgroup, this one. So we have, uh, so in, uh, in SL2C, we are in this uh, situation. So we have, uh, uh, it's kind of, uh, so the, there is this, uh, we have three of them that we care about. So this uh, uh, one, P1, and then there is, uh, T, T minus 1, and then there is 1, T, 1. So this corresponds to H, this corresponds to X, and this corresponds to R. Okay, well. So we have three one-parameter subgroups going 
through the identity element. This is a very wrong, uh, this is a very wrong picture because SL2 has dimension 3, so it is uh, best represented in uh, four dimensional space, so it is impossible to draw. But uh, it's an attempt of drawing. Okay, so what we have done is, okay, great. We have these uh, three types of one parameter subgroups. Okay, one parameter subgroup, integral curve of So if I fix a vector field, I get an integral curve. When I fix a vector field in a Lie algebra, which is tangent space, I get an integral curve that has the additional structure of being a subgroup. Because uh, of Frobenius theorem, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. But here we can uh, check it right away, because this is a group, this is evidently a group, and so on. Okay. Now, what uh, we can do is that, uh, uh, so he calls this uh, map rho, he calls this map rho alpha, so this is the differential of rho alpha. So he says, okay, for each of the three one parameter subgroups, we have uh, the image in G. Okay, so it's very... When you say a vector field in G, a vector field is defined on the group, not on the vector. Well, it depends, because what is the definition of a Lie algebra of a Lie group? A Lie algebra of a Lie group yes. are the set of the left invariant vector fields that live on the group. And it is identified okay. with the tangent space at the identity. Being a Lie theorist, we forget about this identification. How it is done, this identification? So, a vector field is an element in G. Non zero element, or not, an element in G. S in that remark. Okay, it is. Uh, um, it is not obvious that uh, there is this identification, right? So, uh, in order to do this identification, you have to decide your definition of TG, right? You want me to show this identification? No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no, no. It's okay. It's easy. It is what you said. An element in G is a vector field on the group. This is what is said. This is what I said. Right. It is so I don't understand. You, it was a question. An element in G, an element of the Lie algebra. Indeed, you wrote x in G, lying in G. Uh, so this is a vector field on the Lie group. Yes. Okay. Where did I write wrong? I wrote the question. Because you wrote in G, a vector field in G. That is lying in G. This is what it meant. No, no, I but it's, uh, no, I think it's very important because, uh, see, this, no, no, it is a subtle point because uh, uh, tangents I mean, you want to interpret this as a vector field on G, I mean, a vector no, field on, on G, G, no, on G, in G, in G, in G, on G, G is so different G. Thing. Yes, yes. yes, but uh, still, uh, it's, uh, I think your question is important, especially for the students, because there is a difference between a vector field and a vector. They are two different things. Eh? Okay, so vector is uh, just uh, something like this on a vector state. The left invariant vector field at each point you have a vector. How do you obtain it? Because you move it around through the translation. I don't want to repeat here the theory of Lie groups, but uh, it has to be I don't know, this thing is easy but not obvious, this identification. Certainly, if you have a vector field, you have an element in here, obviously, because you evaluated the identities, no problem. Is that if you have one here, you make it a vector field by moving it all around through the translation morphism, that's all. Translation is right, no, left multiplication. 
hopefully, I always forget that because the left invariant, you will be the left multiplication, I think. Okay. But what I wanted to say is the following, that you have S and 2C, so we take one, this uh, one parameter subgroup, and we obtain a subgroup in G. Same for the others, right? It's not the same T, I write the same T, but we understand it's not, I mean, it's, uh, it's the set of, so all these elements and so on. So we identify these uh, groups. Now they, uh, it gives names of two this, okay. So he calls them, uh, I don't like how he calls them. So it, I call them in different way, as he calls. So this is uh, X alpha D, okay. And this is, uh, I, I forget what it calls, but the most reasonable name is this. H alpha D with a small. Okay. <coughs> and uh, you know the theory of the Chevalier groups starts from these objects, right? But we don't want to do this theory. We're in the differential setting. Now um, there is one more thing I want to say on the Lie algebra before uh, we go to the group uh, mm? and before we go to things that I don't understand. Um, so I can erase, right? We understand for each, uh, for each root uh, there is an SL2 sitting in G, there is the group uh, sitting in G, that is G. Uh, this uh, is a little bit uh, because this is not, uh, you know, we can't ask immersion here, right? We cannot ask immersion because it would be a PSL, right? So it doesn't have to be immersion at this. Uh, mm. But uh, certainly, even if, if it's not immersion, right, because this would be equal and then the here it would be. Uh, no, no, the SL2, yes, so if G is a PSL2, you will have a quotient map. It can't be, a, it's not immersion, right? Necessarily. Okay. Okay, but. And? You assume that G is separate. Hmm? Ah, right, simply connected. Uh, wait. Right, right, so you cannot have a PSL2, right. So maybe in that case it's always immersion. And the universal cover, if it is simply connected, is the universal cover. Uh, one parameter, no problem, is the center. I don't know. It's probably something stu stupid which I should know. What does it say? Do you have the copies? It says if it is in version of this. Hmm. It says yes, it is always in version. Probably the simply connected plays a key role to that. I'm sorry. Now is something very, um, <clears throat> very obvious. So we can decompose G as follows. So here you see alpha positive and negative. So I can write the positive all together. Okay. So I have alpha, say alpha negative, G alpha, and then plus H plus. Uh, alpha positive, 
okay? And I call this n, so this is n minus and this is n plus. This is, uh, well, these are many properties, they are nilpotent uh, and uh, it is not hard to see at all because it's basically the brackets, right? It's, these are nilpotent the algebras, but it's not, it's not important now. Now I want to call, it, instead, one thing important is that B plus is H, but, sorry, yeah, H plus and plus, and B minus, uh, <clears throat> these are the Borel, positive and negative Borel subalgebras. Uh, the theory <clears throat> of root system tells us immediately that these are subalgebras because uh, uh, if you take a bracket of two negative things, it's negative. And if you take a bracket with element in H, you stay negative. So it's really uh, a subalgebra. These uh, subalgebras uh, uh, play a key role, key role in this, uh, but depend on the choice of the cartan. So if you choose different cartan, of course you get a different variety. But we choose uh, Cartan, we choose uh, the beginning. Positive, we choose, uh, we make a choice, and then we have the Borel fixed. I'm saying that the Borel is not coming uh, like uh, attached to G. It depends on the choices we made. So it depends, uh, of course, on the Cartan and uh, the choice of the positive system. So the root system is attached to the V algebra. Like uh, we know, it's a one-to-one -one correspondence. It's really intrinsic. But the choice of a positive system is not intrinsic. It's a choice we make. The Borel subalgebras, however, are all uh, isomorphic. Like they're all the same because they're conjugate under an element of G, the group. So it's, this is a, non, a highly non-trivial uh, fact. So it's, uh, it's hard to show. So we discussed this. Now, so I'm really recalling things because, uh, I mean, this, this is really worth a course, this, all these facts. Now, um, I want to speak about the weight lattice. Maybe I don't want to say the weight lattice now. I want to say a different thing. Because the weight lattice, I wouldn't want to say. OK, I want to speak about the value group. What is the value group associated with G? Mm -hmm. So let me recall what is the value group associated with a simple Lie algebra as we have here. So the value group is generated by all of the reflections of the root. So for each root, if alpha belongs to the root system, we can define this uh, reflection. This is a reflection that takes place into a real form of H the uh, Cartan. So, so we recall this last time, but let me say. And the group generated, so the group generated by all of the S alpha is a finite group and is uh, a group of permutation of the roots. The subgroup. Now this is the Val group associated with the Lie algebra. This is an object that we know well, hopefully. Except that this is not what he wants to do. He wants to look at the different realization of the Val group inside the G itself. So he wants to define the, the Val group looking inside the G itself instead of the Lie algebra. Okay, so it's a different perspective on this. How do you do this? 
So this is an alternative definition. So it's an alternative and equivalent definition. Um, I forgot. I forgot to say an important thing here. Before I do the alternative definition, I forgot to say that uh, this, the second theorem of Lie tells us that for each Lie subalgebra there is a corresponding Lie subgroup. Okay. Uh, this is a highly non-trivial point. So that uh, so for so. There is a B plus and a B minus corresponding to this B plus and B minus. They, they are subgroups sitting inside G and then also H so that EH is equal to H. E, okay. So for, yes. Each for algebra, how many for subgroups are there that correspond to that? No, no, it's a theorem by uh, Lee saying that if you have a Lie algebra, not simple, just any Lie algebra, you're looking at a subalgebra, there is a unique group associating with it, there okay. is a one to one correspondence. Lee subalgebra, Lee subgroups. Right. Okay. So there's only one for every Gross algebra, there's only one Gross. Absolutely, yes, yes, it's a very important theorem, extremely okay. important. Is an application of Frobenius. It's a very interesting theorem. And it's false for the algebraic category. So we are in the complex analytic category. It works. Differential in complex analytic, but for algebraic, it's false. So if you're looking at algebraic group, they have the algebra. If you're looking at subalgebras of that, even over the complex field, they do not correspond to groups. Okay, so it is really because in differential structure we have more room. Very important, second Lie theorem. Okay, so I'm sorry I forgot to say all of this because uh, for me the Borel is a friend, is always, <laughs> but of course, <laughs> of course one has to know that there is a subgroup corresponding to subalgebra even if uh, for me it's everyday life uh, it is important. Uh, a non-trivial thing. Okay, so Val group from the G point of view, now the Val group from the group point of view. There is no reason a priori that you can reconstruct the Val group data inside the G, but in fact you can. Okay, so the idea is like Forget about the, the algebra and reconstruct the value group only with the G information. For example, we run a seminar on algebraic groups, right? And so in algebraic groups over arbitrary fields, there is no Lie algebra to help you because uh, the algebra is a differential object and when you differentiate and the characteristic is not zero, it's a bad idea. So you have to reconstruct all the theory inside the G. So see, this is a, a very algebraic point of view because from the algebraic point of view you start with this data and you forget you have this data. So you build the Val group and the root system you build inside G. It's a very interesting point of view, but this is not what we want to do. I just want to define. So the Val group by definition is the normalizer of the group H divided by H. Mm. It doesn't appear to be the same. <laughs> uh, the normalizer in G, of course. Mm. So, uh, I will attempt uh, an explanation. Then uh, Fabrizio, if I don't succeed, you kill me, okay? I will attend. Because it doesn't appear to be obvious, right? I don't. I know. Okay. So, 
My attempt of explanation will take place uh, in SLM. I apologize for restricting my attention to this, but... Uh, so, what is the Vali group uh, for this uh, Lie algebra? So, the Vali group uh, is the permutations. Uh, now, wait, before you, you kill me, there is one... Right. Less one, of course. So, we're looking at SLM plus 1C. So there are n simple roots, and the vial group permutes them. So if you remember the picture I, I draw in class for the D-algebra course, the picture is the following. For SL3, uh, wait, so I have two simple roots. No, it's, uh, it's S, yes, because A3, so this picture of A2, which is SL3. Yes, yes, I'm happy. Yes, 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 this is right. So this is uh, the picture of A2. No, I'm making a mistake on the index, right? Yes. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, uh, what can I do? N is the same. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, how can I remember these silly things? So this is SL3C. So the group of, uh, so you have, uh, all of these roots, you have the six roots, and you take the group of full permutations of all these roots. I know you have your despise that I don't remember this uh, indices. <laughs> because, uh, see, the rank is one less, so it's difficult to remember. So, we know that in this picture, right, uh, uh, of this root system, you have six roots, and the value group is the group of permutation of all these roots. So the group is uh, S3. Okay. Now, uh, how do we reconstruct uh, with this very strange uh, picture of H? So, look at this, right? Uh, uh, I'm making this little calculation because then we need to know a little more of these things also. So the... What did you say that the by group is the group of permutation of the three positive groups? This is not true. Not true? What am I saying? Uh, oh. So it's, it's, it's S2, I forgot. No, the by group is S3, but it's not the group of permutations of positive groups. No, not the positive groups. Uh, of the root system, I said. The root system? Yes, but it's not. The group of all the no, 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 it's not, no, no, that's wrong. wrong. That's that's wrong. No, I that's not the reason why it's uh, S3. No, no, because uh, certainly you cannot, uh, it is simply transitive on the basis of the root system, which means that you are not allowed to make the rotation of the elements of the basis, right? So, but do we have to discuss the root systems? I made a mistake, but uh, no, no, you're right. So what he's saying is that you're not that okay. So maybe maybe you think when it's the hyperplanes that correspond to each other. Right, right. 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 That's, that's the best way. Right. right. Okay. When you're studying the root systems, it's not that you can take an arbitrary permutation of the roots. There are rules to follow. One rule is that uh, uh, when you take so the, the group are simply transitive on the basis but sets a base a base of the root system, this is a base into another base. So you cannot say these two vectors into these two, for example. So uh, I was wrong when I said it's the permutation. No, no, that's very wrong. But uh, luckily uh, Fabrizio is here to remind me when I say wrong things. Okay. And in fact, what is it? We, we can see the group of permutation. Of the base. Like alpha is uh, As a, epsilon yes. 1 minus epsilon 2 and beta is uh, epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3. Can, can we say that just as the number of uh, possible base that you can choose in that also? Yes. This is another way. Which is 6. Yes, yes. Okay. It is 6 because one you fix. Uh, <coughs> is it right? Uh, one, two, three, yes. Okay. It's a long story, the root system, that I don't want to do it here. Okay, but let us, uh, uh, first of all, understand what is H. So H uh, here is the E of this thing, right? Is this. 
no, sorry, is the group whose Lie algebra is the exponential of this. So this is something like T1, T2, T1 minus 1, T2 minus 1, right? This is the, this is the H. Or oh, let me write this T3, and then we remember it is the, um, it is linked with that. Now, uh, if you check, what is the normalizer of this? If you try, I think you can do it by hands, I'm not sure. So this is the set of matrices that have like an element different from zero, one different from zero in each uh, row, and one, one, one and only one different from zero in each row. If you check this, this normalizes, and uh, I, I've not tried, but can you show it? It's really the only one that does it, I'm not sure. Maybe by hands is a little difficult. Mm. Are you talking about the general case or about No, no, let's do three, three by three. Maybe you can do that. They, they, say, they say you can do that, I've not tried. But certainly, okay, let me tell you this. Certainly this uh, normalizes. To show they are all is maybe, it's difficult because you have to take generic matrix and multiply and check. Not so simple. No, it's not hard. I think you can do. Yes, because you have, yeah, yeah, that is. It's, it's uh, three by three. So. Now, if you if you do mg h mod h, this is really what are called the permutation matrices, right? Uh, those that have one. Of course, there is plus or minus, okay? Because you have to get the determinant equal to one. So these are called the permutation matrices. So at least in the example of uh, SLN, I show why this is a chance of being true, sort of. What is the... and uh, this is really not uh, an example in the sense that H can be always chosen to be diagonal. This you can always do. And this type of argument, if you have enough patience, you can do for all groups because there is a list of simple groups, at least the families. There is this diagonal, the normalizer, see, the, if you prove this is the normalizer for a cell, if you take the orthogonal, it's going to be a subgroup of this, because it has to normalize, right? The orthogonal is extra condition over, over this. And so it's kind of believable that this, uh, eh? Also, H is a smaller group. So a smaller group is true, but no, it's true, it's true. You have to do it. It's not, uh, I don't agree it's really smaller because uh, for the orthogonal, you have uh, two pieces, uh, right? Yes, yes. No, I'm saying that there should be some theory, but uh, not having the theory, one could check. Eh? Uh, your example, the uh, group as two but uh, S3 and uh, the six elements. No, this is not the uh, yet. No, no. These are all the matrices with this, right? All the matrices. That are, I, I wrote one matrix, but you have to consider all the matrices. So all the permutation matrices. No, there are six of them. Three. So I wrote the, this is the matrix corresponding to the element 1, 2, okay. zero, 1, 3. And then you have to write all six of them. No, I'm sorry. I just uh, see. I, I want to be useful to everyone, but Marta is now sleeping because no, no, she knows no, very well no. the permutation matrix is so it is terrible. No, well, no, listen no, to this. No, <laughs> no but in, I'm the sorry. The reason why plus or minus one is that the determinant should be one. So. No, it's, it's. So in this case, it's minus one. Okay. But uh, writing in this way is really wrong because I should write uh, this. Is a, is a class, right? So the plus or minus is because it's a class. Okay, so we sort of have reconstructed the, no, but uh, we have to do the calculation. Now there is the weight lattice, okay. 
So we're starting as, ah, no, 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 I want to say, right, right, right. Mm. Sorry, I want to say something more about, uh, so, sorry, I want to say something more. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I just want to, I don't, I don't really want to say it, but I'm forced to do. So if I take an element, eh? What? I we need some wheels for the camera to turn it around. No, but uh, Fra Francesca is uh, very generous. Yeah, she is. Okay, so if we take an element of the value group, now that we sort of established that it is a subgroup of a permutation group, it's fine, and so it is. We can write it a, a reduced decomposition. What is the reduced decomposition? I can write it as, uh, I forget, uh, Fabrizio. You want to write it as a product of transpositions, right? Uh, simple. simple transpositions. See, I don't really care about the reduced decomposition. So you can write an element. Uh, so obviously, so this sits inside some SN. So it is equal in the case of SL, but in the case of other groups, it's not uh, the permutation, it will be a subgroup. Now, uh, you can write an element in the permutations as product of simple transposition. And of course, you have different uh, ways of writing a simple. It's not unique writing as a, a product of simple uh, transpositions. However, you may choose a minimal number. And it turns out that, uh, so if you write it as a simple transposition, this R is important, is the length, so the minimal uh, of W. And the, the expression of W as this product is called the reduced decomposition, as is not, is not unique. Okay. It says something more about this, but I figured that I didn't want to say it. There is more, but uh, we don't need it for now. Maybe we need it later. And uh, okay, you should say something about the simple transposition, which are we generate the type the, the value group also. Ah, you will say it when it is your turn. Did, did you say what the, the basis is? A basis, yes, yes. Uh, I, I'm very surprised that you asked this question because we're supposed to look carefully at all my lectures. Yes. So simple uh, transposition means uh, uh, yes. reflection through a, yes. an element of the basis. That's the case of the symmetry group in general. I don't care. Hmm. Okay, maybe I stop at five so minutes. The idea that they are not simple transposition. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, no, no, this is a very important point. So, uh, SI are not simple transposition. They are the, the uh, reflection associated with base. What does it say? I forget. I should read really more carefully. So it says... No, see, it does not... Uh, no, it says uh, the product. Uh, ah, no, no, right, right. Yes, the elementary reflections. It calls elementary reflection. So there are those reflections associated. Uh, so elementary reflections associated with base element. Yes. So, for example, here we consider reflections uh, according to these hyperplanes, uh, but not.